everyone, and welcome to Classic Home Recipes. I'm Michael Wesley, and today in the kitchen, we'll be making veal marsala. Now, marsala wine is Italy's most famous version of fortified wine. Hailing from Italy's sunny southern region, marsala is an ancient city on the coast of Sicily. Like its other fortified cousins, port and sherry wine, marsala is a higher alcohol wine, usually around 17%, that is available in both sweet and dry versions. A typical marsala sauce, like the one we'll be making today, involves reducing the wine to almost a syrup with shallots and other herbs. It's then poured over meat, such as chicken or veal, served with pasta. Trust me guys, you'll want to stick around and learn how to make this simple yet amazing dish. Now I'm going to get things all set up in here, and in the meantime, here's another way to make a classic dish at home. I'm Kevin Wesley, and today we're going to show you how to make chicken cordon bleu. Now it's a classic popular dish made with boneless skinless chicken breast wrapped with a pork meat such as ham or bacon and a soft cheese such as mozzarella, Swiss, or blue cheese. And then it's either fried or baked. So let's get started because I know you guys are hungry. For chicken cordon bleu, you'll need four boneless skinless chicken breasts, about three tablespoons of Dijon mustard, four slices of ham, four slices of Swiss cheese, about one cup of flour, about a half a cup of breadcrumbs, one egg, two tablespoons of water, some toothpicks or wooden skewers, and some oil to coat the pan. All right, let's start this whole thing. Now the first thing you might notice, I have some gloves on. This is a messy process, so gloves might not be a bad idea. Now for the chicken breasts, I bought the thinly sliced boneless, skinless chicken breast. I find them much easier to work with because we're going to pound this to about a quarter inch thick and it's just a lot simpler. So buy the thinly sliced boneless, skinless chicken breast if you can. So we're just going to lay this out on our plastic, cover another piece, get our pounder and go to work. Now, like I said, you're looking for a quarter inch thickness. So that's pretty good. That's a keeper. All right, chicken breast is nice and thin here. About a quarter inch thick, like you can see here. Yeah, I think we're done pounding these. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our mustard, our ham, and our cheese, and we're gonna put all that into here, roll it up that goodness, and then stick it with some skewers to hold it. So let's get started, why don't we, huh? All right, now first thing, chicken has two sides here. It's got a shiny, flat side, and then more of a shredded, uh, rough side. Make sure your shiny side is down. So we're gonna take our mustard here, Evenly cover the chicken breast with some Dijon mustard. It doesn't got to be too much, but just enough, you know? Well, it depends on what you like mustard, I guess. Put that there. We take a slice of ham. Put it more towards the front, because we're going to roll it that way. And then a slice of cheese, Swiss cheese. Now, like I said, you can use mozzarella, Swiss cheese, pretty much any soft white cheese is good, but I, for me, I prefer Swiss cheese. So then put the cheese in the middle, and you just start rolling it up as tight as you can get it. It's going to start sliding, but that's what we got our skewers for. You can use toothpicks or skewers that I cut down like that. I find the thick skewers here that I cut work best. Stick it through. Make sure it comes out the other end. And you get something that looks pretty much like that. Now I put these on a plate and we're gonna put this in the fridge for an hour. All right, we're gonna let that sit in the fridge. It's gonna get nice and cold. It's gonna get more compact. It's gonna hold together. So for at least an hour in the fridge. All right, so we get, took our chicken out of the fridge and now we're going to start coating this with all our different ingredients. But first, let's get this egg broken here. Put that right in the bowl. 
Then we're going to add our water. I'm just going to whisk that together. Let's start doing this, right? Okay, so we take one of our skewered chicken breasts. Just make sure the toothpick is even on each side. And we're going to coat it in the flour first. Just make sure it's nice and good and coated. We're going to dip it in the egg. And then the breadcrumbs. Remember when I said it's a messy process? Here you go. Let's get it nice and even. Make sure all the good bits are covered. Give it a quick little shake and put it on the plate. Next, do the same thing with the other chicken breasts. So we got them sitting on our plate now. Unfortunately, we got to put that back in the fridge for another hour. All right, guys, I took these out of the fridge again. Um, I preheated my oven to 350 and I turned on my skillet here and we're gonna fry these for two minutes on each side. So let's start that. I'm gonna add a little bit of corn oil here. Oop. Add a little corn oil to just cover it up. These look like they're done. Let's just add them to our baking tray here. Oh yeah, smells good guys. All right, we'll turn this off. Set it aside and we're gonna put this in the oven now for about 25 minutes to 30 minutes. All right, we just took this out of the oven. Mm, I, got, I wish you guys could smell this. It smells so good. The kitchen is just <laughs> saturated with good smells right now. All right, we're gonna let this cool a bit because uh, chicken, like all meats, if you cut it open too early, all those juices are gonna come spilling out. So we're gonna let this sit for about 10 minutes and uh, then we're gonna try it. All right, guys, moment of truth. Let's grab one of these bad boys and see how it tastes. Let's take these skewers out here. That looks good enough to eat. Let's try a piece here. Mmm. I'm telling you guys, this is a real easy classic recipe to make at home. And I want you guys to do the same thing. That's all the time we have right now. I'm gonna send you back to the studio. And as always, enjoy. Hey guys, welcome back. While you're away, I've gotten things rolling a little bit here. I've got my mushrooms, shallots, and garlic all cut up. And I've got four veal cutlets coated with flour. I've also put three tablespoons of oil in my frying pan and brought that up to a nice hot temperature. So we'll start with frying these cutlets. Make sure to add them away from you. Oh, it's sticking a little bit there. Make sure to add them away from you so you don't splatter on you at all. Just lay them nice in the pan. Make sure that they're not overlapping each other at all. Turn that up just a little. Now we'll let those cook for about one minute on each side just till they get nice and golden brown. Make sure to stir it every once in a while so we don't get it burnt. Now when you're coating them with flour, make sure you don't use too much. Otherwise that'll kind of burn the veal and give it a little bit of a burnt taste. And we don't want that. Just kind of get a sneak peek. Just needs a little bit more time. You can kind of tell when it starts to bubble up a little bit there. It's almost getting ready to be done. Make sure. A little telltale sign is when the edges are nice and golden brown around the outside, they're ready to be flipped. 
and almost here. Give another little peek. Yeah, that's ready to be flipped. Oh, that's perfect. Right around the edges, that's nice. Put that one more in the center. Again, about a minute on each side. Should get the nice gold brown. We're not worried about cooking them thoroughly yet. We just want to get them nice and seared. Get them nice and golden brown all around. Keep stirring that every once in a while as to not burn it. Just take a peek on the other side. Just a little bit longer. All right. That looks about done. All right. Now I'll put these on a side plate for right now. Just take them off. them off to the side. Now I'll add them again to the sauce later before we finish. But now using the same pan we're going to add our garlic and our shallots. That's one chopped shallot and four cloves of garlic. Just stir them all around and make sure you use the same pan again because there's still excellent flavors locked up in here from the fried veal. Stirring that nice, good. Wow, does that smell good? Keep stirring that, get them nice and brown. About maybe 30 seconds, 45 seconds. Keep stirring that all the way around. Wow, does that smell good? You can really smell the garlic. Turn this down just a little bit. All right. Now we'll add our sliced mushrooms. That's four ounces of nice sliced mushrooms. Just add them in there. We'll cook these for about three minutes. Just get them nice and brown all the way around. Now they may look big right now, but don't worry. They really do shrink. So you can either add whole mushrooms or you can slice them up. It's just personal preference. Just keep stirring them around just a little bit. Now another thing to remember when dealing with mushrooms is when you buy them from the store, make sure you wash them before you put them in the pan. Sometimes there's just a little bit of excess dirt on them. Just keep stirring them all around nice and easy. Don't let that cook about three minutes. So you can already see they're already starting to shrink. it just a little bit here. Keep stirring every so often. Again, we don't want these to burn. I can really smell that. Really smells good in here in this whole kitchen. Keep stirring. You can already see they're really starting to get smaller. Next, we'll add the Marsala wine. It's about a half cup. Just pour that right in there. The pan's nice and hot. And again, we're gonna bring that to a boil and then simmer for about two minutes. Now be careful sometimes when you're adding the wine in here, it can flare up on you. Maybe burn you a little bit, so just be careful. Keep stirring that every so often. Now this is where you'll really see the mushrooms start to shrink. Just about two minutes here, wow. The wine really is, smell, is strong. You can really smell the alcohol in it. But it's all burning off. Just keep stirring that, just let that sit just a little bit. Get everything nice and center in the pan. stirring. Wow, it really smells good. Cannot wait for the finished product. All right. Just 
Now, we're gonna add the beef broth. It's about three-fourths of a cup. Just pour that in there nice and gently. Turn it just a little bit higher. And our rosemary sprig, just to give it that herbal kick. Now this will take about four minutes. Doing the same thing as we did with the rosemary wine, getting it to a boil, and then let it simmer. Now, if you want to save some time, you can either heat up the broth beforehand, because it's most likely going to be at room temperature. And if it's at room temperature when you're adding it to the pan, it's going to bring down the temperature of the ingredients and the pan itself. Let's keep stirring that. Let the sauce thicken up a little bit. Wow, you can already see it's starting to thick up. Just turn that a little bit higher. Keep stirring that every once in a while. Get that rosemary nice and in there. Keep spreading it around. Now, while we wait for that, why don't we drink some wine? It's actually meant for drinking. 2009, that was a good year. Pour ourselves just a little bit. Aerate that just a little. That's good. Tastes very good. Now, just stir it a little bit more. Just a little bit. You can see that's starting to come to a boil. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want. It'll start to thicken up a little bit right now. Well, that's going. I'm going to go right back to this wine. Very good. Now, if you're trying to decide a wine that would go nice with this dish, typically be a darker wine, like a Merlot or something like that. A lot of people like to match up their dishes with the wine they drink. And a Merlot is something that I definitely recommend for this dish. Keep stirring it every so often. You can see that rosemary is really starting to turn dark green. Mushrooms are, have significantly shrinking. Keep stirring here. Just turn that down just a little bit here. Keep stirring. Just let that sit. Just a little bit. And again, I'm gonna go back to the wine. About a minute or two more. Just keeping everything going. These shallots have significantly shrunken as well. Everything kind of starts to diminish away in this dish, but brings out a great flavor. Keep stirring. Turn that back up just a little bit so it gets to thicken. Now, the longer you cook this, the more it's going to thicken up. So if you really want a thick sauce, cook it for a little bit. But if you want a thin sauce, just cook it for the four more minutes. Keep and stirring. Oh, you can really smell that rosemary in there. It's strong, but it's not too strong. It gives it the perfect, perfect smell, as well as flavors. Again, the mushrooms really have shrunken. Make sure to get that rosemary all over there. So the mushrooms really soak up the flavor, the rosemary. It's a great spice, great spice. Keep in stirring. Turn that down just a little bit, for about 30 more seconds, and then we're gonna add our veal. Right now, that the sauce has reduced just a little bit, I'm gonna put our veal in. Slide it in there nice and gentle so nothing splatters back at you. 
again, make sure nothing's overlapping. Put them in there nice and gently. Now, turn this back up just a little again. Make sure the veal really gets covered with the sauce here. And we'll let this cook in here for about another minute just to cook thoroughly the veal. Make sure it's nice and done, but not overdone. Just keep stirring that around. Wow, does that smell good? You can really smell all the flavors coming together now. The shallots, the garlic, this smells good. And lastly, we'll add our tablespoon of butter right into the dish. Stir that around. Make sure that butter melts and gets it everywhere. Yeah, that smells good. Just about 45 more seconds here. Really want to make sure the veal is cooked all the way through. That sauce is nice and thick. Keeping that rosemary in there. Now just be careful once again. It's bubbling a little bit here. Make sure you're not burning yourself. And if you want to, you can even wipe it down just a little bit. But it doesn't seem that bad here, so I'll keep it going. All right, now, time for the final plate. Let's get some pasta on here. And then we'll put our veal on it. Just nice off to the side. Now, we don't want to forget the best part. Turn that down a little bit real quick. We'll add our sauce, some mushrooms. We'll add some mushrooms and sauce to the noodles as well. Just one more scoop. Make sure it's all covered. And there you have it. Just a simple dish, mouth-watering veal marsala. Now I'm gonna try just a little bit here. just to make sure it's good enough to eat. That's really good. You can really taste the sweetness from the wine, as well as the shallots and the garlic. You can taste everything in this dish. Well, unfortunately, we're all out of time. I hope you enjoyed today's program, and I'm Michael Wesley.